In today's video, why it might not be a good idea to have whey protein before bed. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Arbella from ProPhysique.com and today I got my man Steve Bogrand. So you know what that means. Science with Steve. Coach uh, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Who put fecal matter on the basketballs? I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> so today's video, we're actually going to discuss an article in this month's issue of Mass, which I'll link below. So for those that aren't aware, Mass is the monthly application and strength sport where a bunch of smart dudes review a bunch of literature and tell us what it means or doesn't mean and if it has implications in what we do. Building yeah. muscle, losing fat, looking good naked. And my man Steve here has got his shiny new master's degree in exercise science. So who better to ask than my man Steve? Yeah, man. So I guess that's what I do, right? I take what smart people do and then I dumb it down for the rest of us. Um, so Dumb it, it down for me. <laughs> definitely a good study here. We're looking at okay. a whole bunch of different studies. A lot of them um, are just kind of correlational, but a couple of them actually were changing the amount of protein that people were taking in um, and then looking at their sleep quality. So not only... Yeah, so ultimately this discussion is about how much sleep is impacted by your protein intake and even, it, even macronutrient timing, correct? Like the timing Absolutely. of those macronutrients. So it kind of has an impact on our physique and our recovery based on how well we sleep oh for sure there's no doubt about it like if we're not sleeping well we're not recovering well stress levels are staying high cortisol levels are staying high um, we're not able to actually adapt to our training stimulus so sleep is going to be an extremely extremely important part of the process in terms yeah. of building muscle losing fat and just making sure that we're you know healthy yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what this what this study showed and uh, what the what the article discusses. So when it comes to sleep, what was the what was the discussion regarding? So the discussion in this article, well, these articles was discussing um, how higher protein intakes, very simply put, are associated with better sleep quality. Not only like so okay. better sleep latency, um, how long you're staying asleep, how good your sleep is. Can we define higher protein intake? Because I think some people get nervous when you say higher protein intake. <laughs> for us, higher would be like double body weight, right? But for like yes. our moms, high protein intake would be like <laughs> 50 grams a day. So what what is what did they define as high protein? So they were looking at it as a percentage of your calorie intake. Okay. So for most of us, like me right now, a higher protein intake in terms of percentage of my calorie is going to be really hard because I'm eating, you know, 34, 3,500 calories a yeah. day. Um, but for most people in general population, which is most likely the vast majority of what these studies were looking at, yeah. um, that's going to be something as simple as maybe a gram per pound of body weight, which most individuals... Yeah like us, probably are already going to be doing. We're going to be having, having a higher protein intake um, than what the RDA yeah. would say, because RDA is well, generally low. RDA is pretty low, but RDA is not looking at people that are trying to put on muscle and keep muscle. So right. one of the, the two numbers that I like to use are either a, a gram per pound for body weight for leaner individuals yep. or a gram based on your goal weight. Yeah, if absolutely. you use either of those numbers, that's going to be considered a high protein intake. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people look at, I need a gram per pound. But if you look at it, you can say, I need a gram per pound of lean body mass. Yeah. So if you're looking at a competitor, stage weights, typically, yeah. you can get away with that. And um, that's still going to be very high compared to the RDA. That might even be triple the RDA's current It's numbers. pretty high, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about... In the study, what were the, the disparities between the people that were not sleeping as well and that were in protein? So one of the big ones was going to be fat intake. Um, so the people that had higher fat intakes, in particular later at night, tended to have um, less sleep quality. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, now, you don't have to have a ton of protein, and they were looking at some things. So like we're not going to have a big meal, generally speaking, and then go straight to bed. That right. might make it tough. Um, but they were looking at still having better protein meals reasonably close to bed, like a, maybe a normal dinner time, two to yeah. three hours before bed, um, and seeing that that had a much better impact on their sleep quality. Okay, so let's talk about the specific sources, because what I found was interesting was you said the article kind of discusses perhaps whey protein might not be the best option before bed, so why might that be? So well, they were essentially going into kind of saying, oh, well, what might the mechanisms be? And one yeah. of the proposed mechanisms might be um, that tryptophan can, in fact, make you a little bit more sleepy, right? Okay. 
Now, depending on the type of proteins you're getting, different amino acids can compete with the carrier molecules that get tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier. So, okay. if you're getting specific types of proteins that have a lot of amino acids that might be competing with tryptophan to get across the barrier, okay. that might have an impact in terms of our sleep quality, ability to get to sleep, and things of the sort. Now, whey protein is very high in the branch chains, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Are those some of the things that would make it a poor choice? So, they can compete. And again, this is a lot of conjecture. So, okay. we don't want to say for sure this is absolutely the certain mechanism. Well, um, it's definitely the title of this video, do not have whey protein before bed. But the point being is that the, their argument is that Correct. some of those specific amino acids might make it harder to fall asleep. So what would, did they mention something other than whey as an option before? Yeah, they were talking about casein or other just complete proteins. Oh, casein. Okay. So still a very high quality protein source. Yeah, absolutely. And having a complete protein, like any kind of animal protein, sorry, Natalie, um, <laughs> also going to do the same things, right? It's yeah. still going to have enough amino acids. It's going to have a little bit different of amino acid okay. profile. Um, and that can do the exact same thing with increasing our protein intake, helping us to get better sleep quality, which means better recovery and a whole okay. slew of other things. All right. So the takeaway from this article, which if you guys aren't already subscribed to Mass, I would highly suggest it because it's something we pour through every month um, and just kind of see what's going on out there. But the idea is sleep has such a huge impact on our ability to recover. Um, especially as me and Steve coach a lot of people that are competing in physique competitions um, That's when we can really get specific about our sleep So if you're having trouble falling asleep and you're having a whey protein right before bed It might be a good option to try a different source. Yeah, absolutely And there's nothing wrong with taking one small thing changing it and seeing if it makes an impact Yeah, because if it makes an impact for the positive awesome And if it doesn't well, hey, then we just go back to what we were doing and we yeah. keep looking um, But with how important sleep is in terms of your ability to hold on to muscle to build muscle to lose body fat to manage stress and everything else That's going on. It definitely bears mention to try some things out if we are having issues with sleep Yeah, and, and, and the one thing that you know there isn't going to be a study for every single aspect of what we do and as yeah. coaches and even as individuals like you have to be able to look at anecdote and oftentimes what I've found is that the anecdote is what leads the researchers they notice a trend and they say well let's put this to the test so I think it's worth a shot um, yeah. I sleep great and I haven't had whey protein in years so there's my anecdote <laughs> and of one yeah absolutely all right guys that's going to be it for us today science with Steve we're going to be at the Arnold all weekend at the core nutritionals booth so come say hello I always use whey protein before bed, though. <laughs> Fuck.